Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. Hope you're doing well. I wanted to give you a little story about a uh, scenario I had today. I sold a vehicle of mine. I haven't sold a vehicle in a long time, and this was a vehicle that meant a lot to me. It was my truck, my pickup truck, my Ford F-350 7.3 Power Stroke. And yes, I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate or comments, FUD comments, or whatever you call them from on-site Trav, because he's a big fan of the 7.3, and so am I. I love them. Easy to maintain. They have a lot less bells and whistles, and my new one's already throwing off a weird sensor. Gotta love it. But I've always wanted this vehicle, and so I bought a new truck, and I sold mine. And I sold it to a gentleman that owns a business, a trash hauling business. And sorry for the sunglasses, guys. It's just the sun is really bright where I'm at. And it's an interesting story because I've went through this before and uh, the gentleman had asked, hey, is it okay if we stayed on the documentation that I paid less? And uh, I knew he had owned a trash hauling business and he was buying this vehicle specifically. He said he's he bummed out because his company's growing, his business is growing and he bought a bigger trailer and he wanted to haul more stuff. And, and I said, yeah, you know, look, that's between you and, and the state, whatever, whatever you want to do, man. It's not my business, honestly. But can I, can I hold you off in a second and just give you something to think about? And he goes, what? So they wanted to put like about half, half the value. I said, so then you're going to pay about half of the registration. He goes, yeah. And I said, so I showed him on the registration tab. I said, you know, half of this registration fee is a wait fee, right? Yeah. And this is based off of, you know, years of me paying this, but you know, the vehicle was worth more. Uh, when I first bought it. And so it's had a lot of depreciation. It hasn't had any sales. He goes, yeah. So I said, so you own a business and you're buying this for the business, right? And he goes, yeah. And I'm all, do you do all your business in cash? And he goes, no. And I'm all, so you send out invoices and you get credit cards and get checks, things like that. Yeah. I said, do you file your taxes? And I'm like, and he gets so weird right there. And I said, look, I, I'm trying to help you. I'm just throwing out some suggestions. I own a handful of businesses. And I'm like, whatever you do is your deal. But I'm like, do, do you file taxes? He goes, I do. I'm all, well, that's right, because you want the write-offs, huh? And he goes, yeah. And I said, you know, this vehicle, uh, because you're using it for business, actually qualifies for a one-time, you know, guys, stop, I'm gonna stop right here. Not tax advice, follow your tax advisor. Go, go talk to a CPA or somebody that's got a fancy name badge. I'm just a guy with businesses. Uh, but it qualifies for a, uh, in my opinion, a, uh, look at the wind is really strong here. Sorry, the camera's even shaking. Uh, a special type of write-off where you can write it off all in one whack. And I said, you'd be giving up half of that write-off because the, I mean, you could lie, but that document sort of stays forever if it ever comes into an audit. And he goes, no, that's what I wanna do. I'm like, okay, well, no big deal. And I gave it to him. I sat back down and did some little sketching and it was really interesting. So that this person, and I think we get confused all the time. You know, there's some people that try and beat the system and that you don't realize that on the, the opposite side, the honest side of, of owning a company, that there's tons of amazing tax write-offs that if, if you do it right, especially if you're in real estate or construction, that you could live your life almost tax-free, uh, especially when you do multi-corporate, multi-entity setups, things like that. I know we've done videos on that stuff before um, and done some tax strategy videos, but in order for this gentleman to save, I'm not joking, it came out to $35 a year. He gave up a $5,000, sorry, $5,500 write-off. Now, let's say you're at the bottom of the barrel and you're, and you're just scraping by and you're making, you know, you're in the, let's say the 18% tax bracket, right? And let's say you got to claim just $10,000 in income, $10,000 in income. And you were able to, to wipe away half of that right there. You literally just saved, just in federal tax, something like, and, and solve my math, because I'm just doing this fast, something like $900 in tax, just in federal. And depending on what state you're in, you just knocked off another, you know, 80 to 90 bucks. Then you also knock off your self-employment tax. I mean, the, the, the list keeps going on and on. And let's say you, you didn't need all that write-off. You could actually transfer it. You can, you know, and there, it's so amazing what you could do with the right write-offs. And I just wanted to do this video because it's really interesting that sometimes people screw themselves because they're trying to screw somebody else. And I, I think it's really a, a bad way of looking at it. Like, need to learn about taxes. I know we're not all CPAs and it makes us, you know, our eyeballs roll back in our heads and oh my gosh, it is. But when you start to realize that wealthy people understand that paying less tax puts more money in their pocket. So they spend a lot of time with their tax professionals. It's very, very important to learn that because you just start making more and more money. Like I said, if you do it right, especially through real estate, you can live a tax-free life.
It's absolutely in impressive. When you start learning about accelerated depreciation, long-term depreciation, uh, uh, sometimes you have to uh, recapture that depreciation, but sometimes you can just defer it too, depending on what kind of company you own. And I think it's very important for, com for our country, especially in America right now, and the rest of the world, start to learn, start to think bigger. You have a side hustle? Look at turning it into a business. Look at doing it the right way, the legal way. Yes, there's, there's some stress and there's some, some you know, nuances and paperwork. But when you start to realize how much money you're leaving on the table and paying to your government, and in all reality, the government sets up these, especially ours, set up these tax brackets to encourage you to start businesses. Why? Because they say very few people will and we want more people to employ everyone else guys think about this i hope this got you somewhere if you thought this was a good video please share it on facebook especially because that really helps out this channel really appreciate you guys economic ninja is out